to ready. One second. All right, everybody should be all set. Jen, rough night shooting. It looked like you guys were in, were were going pretty well, running with them there in the first half, and then the shots just weren't falling. It seemed like. Yeah, I thought in the in the second quarter, especially, we got a lot of really good shots that we typically are hitting, or at least would hit fifty percent of them. And I don't think we even hit ten percent of them. So, you know, as that happens against a team that's as potent and efficient offensively as NC State is, you start to dig yourself a hole and you start to kind of shake your head a little bit. And you know, that's when you really gotta dive in and just try to find ways to get stops and and get some easy baskets and I did not think we did a very good job of that I didn't think we did a good enough job attacking and getting to the free throw line where we could earn some free shots um, and so you know a little obviously very disappointed in the outcome um, they're really good you know we knew that already um, but I, I you know I don't think we gave them our best our, our best game either so was it tough to come back after you guys shot so well the other day? I mean, it's hard to put those games back to back, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, percentage percentages, I guess. I'm not a big analytics slash uh, mathematician, but percentages would say this probably was what was coming because they would even out to probably where we really do shoot. But, um, you know, when you're at home in your own arena, you hope you're going to shoot a little bit better because we practice here and they don't. But, you know, you can – you can say that at Clemson for them. And, and, you know, it didn't affect us at all. The first time we shot at Clemson was in the game. We didn't go to the night before. We didn't do a shoot around. So, you know, it, it's just a matter of, you know, whether we were a little too hyped, too nervous, you know, I don't know what it was. You know, I told each kid, they kind of kind of look at themselves in the mirror and kind of figure out why they were a little tight or why they felt like they, you know, they they were rushing their shot or whatever. And, I'll give NC State a lot of credit. I knew they came in and we knew they were going to be focused. They were fresh. They didn't play over the weekend. Um, their game got canceled because of COVID. Um, so while we were playing and, and battling it out with Clemson, they were sitting at home watching the game probably together. And, and you know, it's just, you know, that's part of the way this season is going. And, you know, the good thing for us now is we're off on Sunday. It's our bye. We get to kind of get refreshed a little bit. Um, Miami is off on Sunday too. So neither team has extra time to get ready for the other. We'll both kind of go into Thursday refreshed and, and ready to go. And it'll be a battle. It'll be a dog fight. And what do you do when, when kind of everybody – goes cold kind of at the same time how, how do you kind of battle through that as coach yeah I mean that's tough I mean we tried to you know I, I thought Vonna kept kept us kind of in it a little bit she she seemed to be the only one that could kind of score you know more I thought you know was probably we probably needed it we one of our emphasis coming in is we really wanted to move the ball and and make them defend multiple actions and you know, I think I thought at times we did a great job of that and then got a great shot and just missed it. And so then it, you start to get a little bit like antsy about hitting a shot or making a trying to find a great pass to a teammate. And again, I thought Rata did a good job with that. I know she had one drive and she hit Liv Samuel for a, an easy uncontested layup. And, you know, when you can get those, you got to be able to, you know, that's what you got to work for. You got to work to either get to the free throw line or get a shot, an easy shot for a teammate. And at times tonight we did that, but uh, we obviously did not do it enough um, you know I think when you when you look at you know our big three big four big five whatever when only one of them gets to double figure scoring and you know you look at the other two and just the the one for nine one for six and even three for nine on Amora it, you know I don't know that we we win games like that you know I, I thought Olive Samuel came in and really did give us a boost she gave us she was a spark she was very good offensively for us um and, you know, and I think moving forward, we need that. We need that going into the next games and into the tournament and, to, and into the NCAAs. You know, the more we can get off the bench and kind of help some. She's a great screener and a big-time rebounder for us and is tough. So uh, we just got to kind of forget this one, um, know that that's where we want to be. You know, we want to beat top fives because we want to be top five. Um, and until we do that, we got to keep going back and keep getting better. And, and getting better and breaking it down and, and individually and as a team getting better. Jen, will you guys come back and forth between Florida or do you get to stay down there for three we're, days? We or? actually are going to stay down there now. We were coming back, but just with um, with the travel and going into the tournament and just, you know, we're, our kids are in Zoom classes, we think, on Friday for the most part anyway. So they will still be in every single class as if they were in Winston in their dorms. But we'll fly down to Miami on, on Wednesday, play, and then fly Thursday after the game to Tallahassee and just be there. Uh, Friday, Saturday, play Sunday and come home. 
you know, a little bit of chance to save our legs a little, especially going into the tournament and save a little bit of that travel. And one more thing, I wanted to get your reaction. There's going to be no fans at the tournament, um, except, except I guess for family members. You know, you've been doing it all year, but still it's just going to seem weird, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to be tough because the, the ACC tournament is like no, no other conference tournament. I've had the privilege to be in a lot of them and a lot of great conferences, but it's an event, but it's an event because of the fans being a part of it. Um, and so, you know, we, we've, we've played in empty arenas, so it won't be different in that respect, but, you know, you've got to generate your own energy and your own excitement. It's going to be an interesting one because, you know, as you watch standings and you've got different amounts of games that people played winning percent, like, I don't really understand how they're going to do standings right now. Um, you know, you just got to keep us locked in on what we got to focus on and, and, and make sure we pay attention to the details and at least our families I think each kid gets two so it's not even your whole families can come it's going to be very limited and um you know it's just it's you know we're grateful to have an opportunity to go over there and play it though so you know we got to take what we can get there coach what does the next week look like for you guys how much time do you give the girls off before uh you guys start to practice and get ready to leave on, on Wednesday for a month. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll take tomorrow off completely and then we're, we're actually going to lift and work, work out on Saturday and Sunday um, you know, we can do some shorter workouts and then our normal routine is Monday off anyway. And then Tuesdays are kind of walk through film Wednesday practice and, and go play on Thursday. So we will kind of do our practice live practice Saturday, Sunday and, and Wednesday. Um, again, trying to get them some rest and recovery for these legs going in this like final stretch these last two weeks being critical for us for what you know for this team and, and and then preparing us for what's next the you know and going to the NCAAs so you know it's I, some of them need the break you know we'd like to try to give two days off but it's just too it's just uh, too much we need to get done so we'll try to spread it out so that our breaks are coming a little closer to the game day as well versus try to give them two days off now and then wear them out going into the games. Been playing amateur bracketologist here obviously a win tonight would have been you know, huge for your tournament resume. It just seems like now the next two games become even more important, does, doesn't it? Do, do you feel like you need to get them both or are you, you afraid to put that much uh, pressure out there? Uh, yeah, I don't want to put that kind of pressure out there. I feel like it's two that we we feel like we, we, we should be able to go and get, but I do think – you know, those two teams are way different than when we played them back a month ago to 10 games ago, however long it was. And you're going to play them on their home courts and it might be senior night for both of their teams because it tends to end up that way this late in the season. Um, you know, I, I personally think we've done enough, but we're Wake Forest. And so we're not going to people aren't going to think that, you know, I, our non-conference schedule was set up to put us in this position, playing two top 25 programs right off the bat and getting a win against one. You know, obviously the Louisville game, I think that's got to stand for something that we took them to one point. Um, today hurt, um, and it would have been a for sure probably lock in if you could have won today. But, you know, we can control our own destiny. And right now that, that, that looks, that's, that's Miami, and that's our, that's our next uh, point of emphasis is what, what challenges, what do we have to do, how do we have, what do we have to kind of clean up before we play Miami. And then, you know, it's another two game season for us. Like that's what we kind of been doing this week. We went one on one. So next week we want to go two and oh. Um, and then we reset again going into the tournament and, and think about, you know, we want to win our next game. That's our, that's been our goal all year is win the next game. And so, you know, it's just trying to keep them positive, keep them positive and thinking about that process and not, not worrying about the outcome or the results. And, you know, I've always said you can't put it all in one game because what happens when you lose that game? How do you get them back up and motivated? And this group has been great because I think they know that um, they feel like they're they're proving it and, and they know they still have to do that on the court. And so, you know, I thought our three road wins were huge. You know, it's anytime you get road wins in this conference period, um, it's a big deal. But when you can get them at a Virginia Tech or Georgia Tech and even Clemson, like it's those are three huge wins on the road for us. You know, I, I'd like to have another shot back at going to Notre Dame because I think we started to figure things out a little bit more on the road. But, you know, now we got to go two more. And a lot of people looked at our schedule and I think they counted us out because we were finishing so much in February on the road. Now our challenge is can we step up to that challenge two more times? Hey, Coach, um, Alyssa Kinane, uh really had a three inch advantage on any player for, yes. for week four tonight. And it showed uh, she had 15 points and 10 rebounds. I mean, how were you guys planning to neutralize her, her risk tonight? And then, you know, what went wrong? 
Right. Yeah, she's one of the best post players in the country. Between her and Liz Kitley, and you know, I hate that I recruited both of them and know both very well. And you know, they're they're both elite level posts. And you know, our goal was to try to you know keep her out of the pain and and, and keep her you know be really physical with her. And and I, I just didn't think we did a good job there at all. Um, she kind of had her way and, 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 you know, was, was laughing at us a little bit, which was a little disturbing for um, myself as a post player about like letting that happen, but she's a great player. She can score in a variety of ways. She can shoot the three. We knew that the end of the play at the half, you know, I, that, that, those kinds of things, um, you know, they didn't do anything we didn't expect. Like everything they did tonight was on our scouting report, was on our film, was on our video. And that was the part that was disappointing. Now they're very good at what, they do and and that's what makes them so special I think their spacing on the floor and then with her inside she just takes up so much space and she just really commands commands the ball and, and just owns that paint and and I, and I thought you know we we did a good job I thought initially trying to go at her a little bit but uh you know more ended up struggling a little bit tonight with her size and so you know, we, you know, unfortunately, we don't really have a six five. We, we'd love to have one. If there's one out there that wants to come be a deacon, I'd love to see it. So, <laughs> but you know, I think our post players are usually pretty good, and and tonight we just weren't where we needed to be. And then with Elise Williams getting some minutes tonight, yeah. I mean, how quickly? Which was awesome. That's great. Um, I mean, how quickly has has she been able to transition to college practices, the college life, the game situations? You know, how has she been able to transition to that from high school play? She's She's been great. She got here uh, December 29th. And, um, you know, I, I think the thing that's been hard, she's been biting at the ch chomp or whatever, however you say that. But she is, um, she's been running kind of scout team stuff. And so she's almost more, learned more of the other team's plays than our plays. But she just makes winning plays. Like, if we need her to be... Shakia Brown Turner, she can lock in and do exactly what we tell her to do. And she's just so coachable and can score in a variety of ways. And she's just a winner. Um, and so, you know, I felt like she's been ready to get her chance. And, you know, and, and I just felt like we needed to kind of go ahead and give her that shot. Um, and, and, I, and I think she's just going to be get better and better. And as she learns more and more of what we're doing, uh, we have another post player, Malaya Cows. It's the same thing, but she didn't get here until about the middle of January. So she's kind of two weeks, three weeks behind Elise. And it's just a lot of information. And at this time of the year, you missed so much of, you know, our philosophies on a lot of things. And so we, we've tried to kind of acclimate them, but also they kind of get stuck running the scout as well. So, um, but I think she's, she's, she's got a bright future in a, in a black and gold and so does Malaya. Um, and, you know, we see it every day in practice. It just isn't a chance right now in some of these games to get kind of get them out there. Thanks, Jim. Thanks. Sorry, it wasn't a better game. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys.